We see how the Alter Rebbe explains extensively the power which is in the mitzvah of tzedakah. So friends, put something into the pushke. 1991, Tavshin Nun on the Shabbos of this week, this week's parsha that is Shoftim, but it all talks about judges and enforcers of judges, as we discussed in the beginning of the week. I want to share with you some of the words that the Rebbe pronounced on that Shabbos. These are amazing, powerful, and empowering, yet at the same time demanding. And the Rebbe said the following spoke many times, in particular lately, regarding the fact that we are now at the threshold of the redemption. We've concluded our task of exile, and now what is expected and demanded from us is to welcome Moshiach, take her from Yad Mamish, immediately, imminently. And the Rebbe goes on to say that the concept of prophecy, although we know that the Talmud says that in the past prophecy disappeared from the Jewish people, yet prior to the coming of Mashiach, prior to the end of exile and the beginning of Geula, prophecy will return in its greatest of forms. As the Rambam says, that the prophet, we believe in him, not only because of the miracles that he does, but because it's a godly commandment. You will have a prophet amongst you that we should listen to. And in fact, this returning of prophecy is a precursor to the coming of Mashiach. And according as it says in the Rambam, that the Navi Godel who Korov Le Moshe Rabbeinu, that the prophet before Mashiach and the time of Mashiach, in other words, Mashiach himself, will be as great a prophet as Moshe Rabbeinu himself. As it actually says that Moshe is the first redeemer and the last redeemer. So really, it's the same soul in a different body from a different tribe, but the qualities are the same. And this is not only going to happen once it's fully revealed as Mashiach, but even prior to that already. And therefore, says the Rebbe, my late father-in-law, meaning he refers to his father-in-law, to the previous Rebbe, was a declared prophet. His promises have all been fulfilled. His prophetic statements have all been materialized. And then the Rebbe continues. Him being a prophet and his following generation, meaning our generation, his students, in other words, referring to the Rebbe, is bestowed with those same qualities, with the prophetic qualities and as such there is a biblical obligation to listen to the prophet of your generation meaning our generation this is what the Torah says that a love to one must listen to him and as the Ramam says if there is someone that has all those qualities and those perfections that is required for a prophet, then we must listen to what he commands us, to his directives. As such, says the Rebbe, we have today a obligation to listen to the prophet of our generation. Now, the Rebbe always refers to our generation, the previous Rebbe, except for when the Rebbe was forced to answer it regarding a court issue and where he was asked, Rebbe, when you're talking about the Rebbe, my father-in-law, who are you referring to? So the Rebbe didn't want to say it verbally, 
but he pointed like this to himself. And as he said once, it's one soul in two separate bodies. So we have today an obligation to listen to the Rebbe's directives. And what are they? First and foremost, to follow Torah mitzvahs. To encourage other Jews to follow Torah mitzvahs. And to go out to the world and tell the world the Besura Sagula, the wonderful news that we are on the threshold of Gula. And the more we spread it, the more we believe it. The more we sing it, the more we ask for it, the more we beg for it, the quicker it's going to happen. So my friends, let's pray together. We want Mashiach now.